Bakar Khani is a gift of Mughals to India. Well, all across Indian states, or rather most Indian states, Bakar Khani keeps differing. Whether in size, in shape, in taste, in texture, some treat it like a bread, some treat it like a cookie. Today on that note, in Chai Diaries, let me make Bakar Khani, which has Kashmiri roots, and this one is more like a cookie. Welcome. Bakar Khani traditionally is an extremely rich bread which is enriched with milk solids, ghee and sugar. Let's first on that note begin with milk powder. Well I've taken a refined flour to which I'm adding in milk solids or milk powder. This is followed up with sugar. I'm using powdered sugar and because I want the texture to be nice flaky and crispy I'm adding in ghee at this stage and we need to treat this exactly the way we treat a cookie or a biscuit. The point is here to make a nice short crust. So let's give all of this a mix. Time to scrape our spatula. And this is best done with fingers. We need to convert this entire mixture into breadcrumb like consistency. The moment this mixture starts coming together and starts forming a clump like so, the next thing that goes in is baking powder. To give this a nice sweet flavor and its fragrance, I'm going to add in seeds of green cardamom. Time to add in salt. And finally, warm milk. We need to bring all of this together and form like a stiff dough. Time to transfer this on a tabletop and knead this for another minute. We need to bring all of this together, press this down like so and roll this into a thick disc. You do not need to bother about any shape and size at this stage because that is immaterial. What is important here is to leaven this exactly the way we do for a puff pastry. For that, let's smear in the remaining ghee. And this is followed up with refined flour. Once the ghee relatively dries up, all we need to do is scrape the remaining bits from the spoon, apply it back onto the disc and start folding this. While folding, what is important here to take care is to take all the remaining bits from the tabletop and smear it back onto the disc. Fold this. And here you have the laminated bakar khani dough done and ready. Time to divide this into individual bakar khanis. Well now bakar khanis can be available in various shapes, various sizes and various thicknesses. You can choose yours and derive your own bakar khani. What I am doing for now is dividing the dough into equal portions. Well here you can see how beautifully this pastry is laminated and that is going to give the texture of the bakar khani. Let's roll this nicely and neatly and keep this aside. Now that we are ready up to this stage, the next and the most obvious stage is to roll this into the most identifiable shape of a bakar khani. We need to bring all the edges together and make it like a rough but still a circular form. The next step is to give it a few gashes. You could also use a fork if you're not comfortable with this. Time to apply some milk and sprinkle some white poppy seeds. Well, traditionally, these are baked in a tandoor, in a clay tandoor. But what I'm doing is transferring this on an aluminium tray and the next step is to bake this. But before that, let's roll and make all the bakar khanis.
Now that all our bakar khanis are rolled and ready, it's time to bake. Let's bake this at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 to 18 minutes. With this, our bakar khani is baked and ready. One final step and that is glazing this with some oil. While we are all obsessed with a daily dose of chai, this monsoon, let's do it a little differently. Let's try bakar khani with saffron tea. Enjoy.